Hello and welcome back to Zim Tutorials for Adobe Animate. I'm Dr. Abstract and in this tutorial we're going to take a look at how to animate with sound. So let's go to the Zim site now at zimjs.com and we've done this a number of times. Um, I actually do a fair number of light shows for bands and, and, and dances. I used to have my own band as well. Uh, but anyway, for years I've been animating to the frequency of sound, and we can do that in Zim with Zim Soundwave. So here are some examples. You can animate to uh, a, a song, for instance, an MP3 file, but you can also animate to the microphone, and that's what I usually do when projecting these light shows live is we'll be animating to a microphone which is picking up the sounds of the band or the music or what have you. Uh, let's see, is there an example in here? Yeah, this one will animate to, this is like a kind of a pr preview promo or whatever for it. Uh, and so if we hit play here, we're gonna play some sound. And then these circles are animating to that sound. Nice, huh? Okay, let's stop that one. Um, so those are some circle rings. Obviously, there's uh, there's the traditional frequency bar type things, bars that go up and down. Well, let's try and make that one. Why don't we? Okay, so here's kind of along those lines. I don't know how quickly this will load. Oh yeah, um, let's play it. Um, so these are modified frequency bands. This is an NFT. What we're doing there is we're doing two frequency bands. The one is the left hand channel and the one is the right hand channel. And the left hand is approaching this way and the right hand is approaching that way. And where they overlap, there's a blend mode. Cool. That Origin 5 series, um, that was the uh, song called Origin 5 that I made with two Moogs. And um, so I just played one Moog channel live and then the other Moog channel live over top of that, in a sense. And broke that down into five parts and sold them as NFTs each. I think they were five Tezos, which is I guess, over $20 each or something. Uh, that's kind of funny. Four, four of them were bought by the same person, and the other one was bought by somebody else who's now charging <laughs> many, many Tezos for the, uh, you know, the, that one. Maybe he thought the original purchaser of the four would want to want to get it. But anyway, um, in the subsequent ones, the, they were slightly different. They increased in their width of um, the bars. Each one was slightly wider as uh, we approached communication with one another. <laughs> so uh, that's, that's that example. Um, but we were going to do that, right? Yeah, let's, let's go do it. Um, so we'll reduce down here and go into Adobe Animate. I just realized something. All our last tutorials I've been putting up with a background color. Uh, well, actually, the sort of the HTML page color of white because there wasn't a setting here. And uh, have a look. So this is the last one. Hey, that's not white out there. Wow. So how did we do that? <laughs> it was easy. I totally forgot. So let's go F9. I'll mention it in comments uh, for the previous ones. But I forgot that the frame has an outer color property. Usually when we set the frame in Zim uh, without ad using Adobe Animate, we pass in a color for the frame and an outer color for the frame. And uh, I forgot that the frame itself, F, has an outer color property that you can set any time or get any time. And there we are just setting it to darker and that leads us to darker. You want to see if we set it to red, for instance, and run it. And now the outer color is red. 
Okay, so <laughs> that, was, that was easy enough to do. <laughs> oh, well. So I went back through the examples, and when you get the zip file, uh, I went back through all the examples and changed it to the outer color that I wanted. Some of them were still white or light, but uh, many of them went to a darker outer color, and now they look better. It was like, duh. Anyway, okay, let's start a new file then uh, from, how do we do that? For here, I'll just close this one and then I can get my familiar little uh, more presets thing here. Let's do that. And choose very high and create. Close our script file for now. So here we have a lighter stage. We might want to work with a darker stage or even a black stage as we draw some frequency bars, may or may not. And then what we need to do here is under more settings, we could go and import our HTML from the Zim Shim. We've shown you that way back in the very first one, but we know that we've stored a profile up here. So we're going to import a whole profile right here. It does that for us, but it also under basics, um, you see that HTML is the Zim Shim now, um, but under basics does some centering. Okay, so we're good to go once we save this file name, file save as, and we shall call this, looks like we're on 23, so we're trying to get up to 30. Number 23, and we shall call it Sound Wave. Are you excited? All right, let's go F9. And we will call this one Zim 23, was it? Sound wave to animate to the sound. Let's go take a look at the Zim docs. There's something in there that we'll need that's not the easiest uh, thing to remember how to do. So uh, there's, let's go find the docs here. So on the Zim site, whoop. Up in docs, we type in sound, sound wave. Okay, so here, here's the Zim docs for that. And it shows you how to bring in, the default is a microphone, and we're saying please make 50 bars or 50 circles or 50 channels that we're, or we're analyzing 50 frequencies across the frequencies basically is what we're doing. And then we're ready, when we're ready, uh, we will run a ticker. So when the sound wave is, is ready, it accepts the mic and stuff, um, we'll run a ticker. That's our way of looping really quickly. It's like an enter frame or something. Uh, anyway, in that ticker, we will let the data equal sound wave dot calculate. And then the data is an array with the amplitude for those 50 frequencies. And you can do what you want with it. With a mic, when you're using plain Zim, you need to bring in this one right here. So uh, before loading sound with frame assets. Uh, no, I think this is, so the mic will be fine, I believe, anyway. Um, but when loading sound, we want to force the web audio, or the, sorry, uh, the HTML audio plugin, as opposed to the web audio. Um, and then we can analyze based on that sound tag that's created. Okay, so this is the thing that I can't remember how to do, so we'll copy that. And paste it right in here. Okay, so that's uh, one thing. And let's, let's uh, begin then. Hmm, how about we make a tile of bars? So const tile equals a new tile. Uh, and we'll make a new rectangle. Hmm, how about like 10, maybe 5, and 100 high, and we'll make it light or lighter or whatever. How many of these do we want? Let's do 50 of them. 50, and um, this is how many columns, just, or sorry, how many rows? One column, and we'll space it out by maybe 10 pixels. Next. So this is what we're tiling. How many in the columns? Or how many columns, how many rows? And that's a spacing horizontal, spacing vertical, doesn't matter in this case. And we will dot center this on the stage. Actually, at this at this point, we uh, let's make our sound wave first. So const sound wave is equal to a new sound wave. Uh-huh. That's why I 
that. New sound wave. And we can say how many in here. Uh, we're going to do 50. And then we'll base that tile based on this number right here by saying instead of hard coding 50 in two places, we'll say sound wave dot num. So that will provide, uh, that's the number of the sound waves. Let's see if I can get this. In this editor, my, my little cursor mouse, or my mouse wheel, middle mouse scroll wheel doesn't scroll sideways for some reason. I don't know why. Usually it does, but not in this window. So, uh, sorry, I can't quite get that on the screen. Well, I can make it a bit smaller, maybe. Yeah. Okay, so uh, there we go. We've got um, our, our tile made and centered. Uh, let's have a look. Control Enter. Okay, so these are the bars that are going to go up and down. Oh, <laughs> and by default, because we didn't put any sound in there, it's wanting to use my microphone which if I allow, nothing's going to happen because we haven't uh, set it up further, but that did allow my microphone. Um, for the sound wave, we'll want to accept a sound. Ah, right, a playing sound. Um, frequency yeah, 50, and by default, we want to put our, our song in here or whatever, our sound in there like that. And then we'll start analyzing frequencies for this sound. So we need to get a sound, but we can't start playing a sound until we interact with the, the app. So that means we'll move to you know, something like a new, well, let's preload the sound. So frame, because we are given here, um, an F for frame, a S for stage, a width for stage width, and a height for stage height. <laughs> okay, so we'll ask the frame, I'll leave that, but we'll ask the frame to load assets, please. Probably if you put the song in, in, in animate, uh, there's probably some way to play it and find out, uh, hook it up, but uh, I think this is also pretty easy to do. Uh, in, in Zim, when we're not using Adobe Animate, we would load our sound in through the frame call. When we make the frame, we can load our assets in there. If we're gonna use them right away, that's probably the best way. But just in, in case we don't want to use or load the assets right away, maybe we might wanna wait till we get to page 10, then load some assets. Um, we also have a load assets method that's available on our frame. So frame.loadassets. And we have put in, let's have a look and see where that is. So in an at, here's tutorials. So our, our file is going to be in here, but in tutorials, we have an assets folder. And in there we have a backing.mp3 sound. It's not the best sound to, to do this to, but it, it'll do. So backing.backing.mp3. Uh, and then that's inside of assets. That's the, the path. So there we go. And we can say f dot on complete. Call this arrow function or call init. I guess we'll just put in there start app or whatever it may be. So there's init. And then here's our function init right here. And inside that we put this stuff. We're not quite ready yet. That That is preloading the sound, but inside a knit here, we need to uh, do our interaction. And so our interaction can be something like new pane. And we can give that a 600 by 300 or something like that. And we can say start visualizer and we will make that be green okay dot show and in the show uh, we can get a call back so once we've interacted it will run this function when we close it so function start is this stuff here
Okay, so sorry about all that. Blah, 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 blah. Um, if our sound was nice and short, we probably don't really need to do this. We could have just uh, did, you know, handled via lazy loading. But uh, just in case, we can do our preloading that way, and then we start our app basically. But we have to wait until we interact. So once we show it, and this is a callback for when we close the pane, it's kind of kind of helps out. We used to have to do an event like on close, then then we're ready to go. But we just uh, change that to pass in a callback, makes it a bit easier. And here we go. So we're going to start. Now we know that our sound is preloaded and that we've actually interacted. So we'll be able to play that sound. But that's not what the sound is. The sound is actually, I could put it in here if we want. Um, const sound is equal to a new odd. And uh, that was called backing.mp3. Like that, dot play. Okay, so it's not just the audio that, that goes in there, but it's the the result of playing it. And that, that's handy because we can loop colon true here and set a volume and various other things in there. Uh, good. Okay, so don't just pass in the odd because that's not even playing. Play it and take whatever we played and pass it in here. Or indeed, you could just take this whole thing right there, stick it there like that. But anyway, we'll do it in two steps. Okay, so this will play the sound. It makes a sound wave object with that sound, but we haven't done our, um, we haven't done our ticker that is constantly analyzing, that's uh, analyzing the, um, the sound. But let's, let's hear our sound playing. Start visualizer, great. Ah, oh, look at our outer color there. We could probably do some adjustments there and I press, ah, and there's our sound playing, great. <laughs> why, did, why, did I, why did I leave that thing red, huh? <laughs> there, go back to that one. Okay, so um, speaking of background colors, let's adjust that now. So we can say frame dot outer color is equal to so frame dot color would change our color of our frame I could overwrite that basically um, frame dot outer color changes the outer color and we will set that to darker that's one of those zip colors go control enter and there it is now darker just like we had done with the generator in the tutorial before uh, except we didn't quite do it in the tutorial. We did it after. We, we did it in this tutorial. We did it after that tutorial. Okay, so great. Let's move to now our ticker. Everybody good so far? We've got our sound playing. We've made these these bars that we're going to animate, and we um, will now do that. So that is ticker dot add. We can add any number of functions to the ticker, but there's only one ticker. It's like an engine. And we can add any number of things to that ticker and they'll get run in the order in which they were added with a single stage.update at the end. So by default, the ticker will run a stage.update right at the end. And nice thing about that is things like zim animate, wiggle, uh, drag, all those things get added to the same ticker and they have a single stage.update at the end. So that way we're not updating for animating, updating for dragging, updating for whatever you want to do here, etc. It's it's like a queue. Okay, so um, that that looks pretty good. Uh, all right, so we'll add a function here. <laughs> there we go. Sorry, I'm just <laughs> laughing because the cat came up and bugged me. Ended up tossing a flashlight at it. <laughs> Animal cruelty. <laughs> it was a small flashlight and I rolled it, <laughs> but... That worked, and the cat is no longer bugging us. <laughs> mm -hmm. dee -dee -dee. I don't know if the flashlight's working. Um, okay, so uh, ticker.add, and here's our function in there that we're uh, going to calculate um, the sound wave. So const data is equal to soundwave.calculate. 
Um, calculate, we, we just made some improvements to calculate in the last version of Zim, I think, and it normal, the, the improvements normalize the, the calculations. So if they're too big, they'll sort of get reduced and it always gives us a number between uh, zero and one. And that helps uh, rather than have sometimes if your sound is really loud, you have big high numbers. And if your sound is quiet, you don't have high numbers. We, we let you set thresholds and various settings to say, oh, if you're, if you're not, if you're not loud enough, then boost it sort of thing. But it wasn't dynamic. It was you had to sort of know how loud your sound was going to be and make adjustments ahead of time. And you could still do that. And that <laughs> unfortunately is still the default uh, because we forgot to update it. So we basically said, oh, we made some improvements in the next version of Zim. We're going to be doing um, the normalization. <laughs> we forgot to make it the default in the next version of Zim. So we're, we're stuck saying uh, in the next version of Zim, which will be Zim version Zim 02, we will have this true be default. <laughs> so maybe by the time you check out these, um, these tutorials, uh, that will be default true. But at the moment, I'm going to put them in there. That means that our calculation will give us a number between 0 and 1. And not only that, but as things get louder or quieter, it will it will um, ad adapt or adjust so that it kind of uh, works through that for you. Okay, great. So there's our data. And if we were to zog that data in here, zog is our console.log, then we'd see a lot of these uh, arrays. Arrays go back because the ticker's running at 60 frames per second. And each time it would show us 30... Uh, elements in an array kind of thing. So I'm not going to bother zogging it, but we'll just use it. Hopefully it'll work out. We won't need to zog it. Um, but uh, we're going to affect the tile now. So we go tile.loop and that will work because loop is a method of tile. Uh, there's also, I don't know if you recall, there's the zim loop where we say something like loop 10 times. Say we were making circles and we wanted to loop uh, sound wave dot num. So that would loop sound wave dot num. And then we could inside here get what index number we're on. And then we could make a bunch of circles that related to that uh, number right there. But this loop is the loop function. This loop is a loop method. We can use the loop method without problem. But for the loop function, you either have to say zim.loop or you would say loop is equal to zim.loop and then you don't have to think about it again. Uh, the reason for that is Adobe has a loop, uh, I don't know, a variable or a loop property of some sort that uh, we didn't want to overwrite. So there is a global um, Adobe loop somewhere. I don't know what it does exactly. It seems that when we get rid of it, it all things still work fine, <laughs> but we didn't want to do that automatically for you. So we, um, we don't, you would have to do something like that. Anyway, we don't want to do that now. Well, I'll just comment that out and down here. We're fine though. Looping through the tiles each time we're going to get a rectangle that's in there and an I an index number. We're going to need both of those this time. So I'll put those in round. Huh a rectangle and I, and we're passing, or those will get passed into this arrow function. So every time we loop, we're going to call that arrow function and the loop will tell us what the tile is, put it right in there, or what the, what the child is that we were, we've looped to, and it will tell us the index. Also tell us the total if we want, but we don't need the total. We do need the I because we're going to get the data here at I. So we've kind of got two, two um, we've got a container of, of uh, children, of, of rectangles, and we've got uh, data with a bunch of numbers. So we're either going to loop through the numbers or we're going to loop through the container, you know, one or the other, and then access the other ones. And probably just easier to loop through the container because we can use the loop method and don't have to go through that. 
Um, okay, so now we get the data and we basically are gonna say rect.height only. So there's a little bit of a tricky thing that we'll mention in just a sec. Rect.height only is equal to data at i. But that's a number between zero and one. So we would multiply that by, oh, I don't know, 300 or something like that. Or maybe it would be better to up here go const magnify equals 300. And then we can go times magnify. All right. And that way, uh, if we want to do adjustments, we just do, do them right here. Probably should have, could have, maybe, yeah, let's do something like this. Const magnify 300, but even before const magnify, what was the other one that we had? Const uh, num is equal to 50, I think. Uh, then we can say num here, and uh, we could say soundwave.num still there, but whatever, we may as well just say num there. <laughs> well, we can see it a bit better without it going off the screen. Okay, so... Um, we're tiling that num, is that right? Yeah, we're tiling that num. We're making the sound wave have that num. We're magnifying it by 300, and there's the magnifying, and that just helps us adjust some stuff as we prepare our, our visualization. Dum, dum, dum. All right, we mentioned this height only thing here, or we put it in there, but said we'd deal with it later. Uh, if you went height there, so the rectangle's height, Zim, by default, when you set the height, will also set the width pr proportionally. And same with if you set the width, it would set the, the height proportionally. Actually, it's not even setting the width or the height. It's setting the scale in behind. There is no, in CreateJS, there is no width and height. They don't even have a width and height, which was one, one of the bothersome things, actually, with, with CreateJS is like, uh, you know, why don't we have a width property? Why don't we have a height property? We only got scale X, scale Y. Finally, they actually gave us scale. We didn't even have that initially. But um, Zim went in and said, okay, well, let's, I don't know, give you width and give you height and give you width only and give you height only. It's only changing the scale. Uh, I think there, there's, well, I know that there's a dot sys as well. So if you say object dot sys, that's width is here and height is there. If you only do one, if you do that, then it will it will be, uh, it will affect the height as well, proportionally. So um, I think that's how it goes. And then there's the height. And I think we might've made another parameter on there that says actually change the bounds without scaling or something like that. I don't know, I think there might be a way to do that without scaling. But in general, width and height is adjusting the scale and we want height only which will adjust the scale of only the height and not the scale of the width, okay? Otherwise, our rectangles would get wider. We're gonna run into a problem already. Uh, why don't I show you the problem though? You're gonna laugh, I'll laugh, we'll all laugh, we'll all cry together. You ready? Start visualizer. Huh. It's like, what? <laughs> oh boy, so did you see what happened there? They went down. So we're adjusting the height of them. They went down. And that is because the rectangles inside of the tile are all top left registration point. By default, a rectangle's top left registration. <laughs> so it's easy enough to handle. Uh, we will tile different rectangles with the reg right here. Arg. Reg of center and bottom, comma, bottom. Sorry, I moved that over there for you, but my mouse little thing in the middle doesn't scroll horizontally. Adobe, you might wanna check out if that's your fault. I don't know, I suspect it is. But anyway, um, there's dot reg, center and bottom. Well, So I don't think the center is all that important. It's gonna scale the height, even if this were left, which is default, but we definitely want that to be at the bottom. Could actually put it in the middle and you might like to see what that looks like. It's quite nice. Anyway, we go control enter here and we'll start our visualizer. 
Wow! Notice that we're sort of too big right at the beginning of that, and then it's slowly starting to sort of settle itself. And now it's um, normalized in there. Uh, the reason why I said this wasn't necessarily the best example to um, use for this is it's a kind of digital thing. It's a synthesized thing, and those have very, usually have fairly clean, like it's just a tone, basically. They have, we can almost see what the tone is by looking at where the doop, 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 doops go. So in a sense, that's, that's kind of good. But usually when you've got, say, voice or singing and stuff, it's more of a complete um, spectrum sound. So for a visualizer, it's maybe good to sort of demonstrate the frequencies, but it's not the prettiest thing to look at. Uh, if we were to make rings of circles, you can have more fluid rings. These are more kind of stepped looking. But do you like? <laughs> Let's see what it looks like if we, if we make the center of that the registration. Can you imagine what that would look like? So that would be center or indeed if we're reg setting the reg to both centers if you just say center that also works that centers them both in horizontal and vertical okay there's the sort of the maxed out but now it it's going to drop down and say okay yeah uh, i'm going to lower the volume or lower uh, the, whatever the threshold or something like that. not threshold what would it be called magnification inside we're still magnifying by 300, but to get zero to one as it does the normalization, that's uh, what's happening there. Okay, so um, as with most of these tutorials, we're just trying to get, get you to see the technique. Maybe um, show you some types of things that you could make with it, but we're not going through and actually making um, complete projects or complete artworks for the most part, right? There is a Zim Explorer, which is another video series. Let's just put that on pause for a second. <laughs> it's like a little screensaver, isn't it? Isn't that nice? That's the Zim Generator. We did that in the last tutorial. Um, but uh, there is the Zim Explorer series. We'll just pop in there. If you go to Zim and then down at the bottom of Zim, either hit the YouTube there or hit the vids in the gold bars. And hello, I I'll tell that Zim story there. Um, scroll on down here and there's making interactive NFTs code in five minutes. These ones are five minute series, but the Zim Explorer series right here. Hello, welcome, welcome to, to Zim, Zim Explore. I am Dr. Abstract. Okay, whatever, yeah. So I've done a few of those. <laughs> so here they are on, on the right-hand side, exploring data. So there's lots of Zim Explores. A soundscape. That was different than animating to sound, and even we went through a few. So these are more full apps that we've made that we're exploring. That's uh, multi multi user explorations, isometric boards, uh, the Zim synth, etc. So these will go. These are longer. They're usually about an hour long. That's uh, an hour, hour and two minutes, hour and five minutes. Some of them are hour and ten minutes, etc. So there's a bunch of explorers for you that are longer and go sort of more detail in into things. Okay, I am Dr. Abstract. Well, maybe before before I conclude, let's just have a look at this uh, code one more time. Just do a quick summary. We found out how to set the outer color. Yay. We To, to make this work at the moment, we're bringing in the CreateJS um, HTML audio plugin. And that, that will uh, set the audio to, to that rather than... A, Yes, some sort of XHR audio or something like that, or web audio. So we're bringing in our assets. When we're complete, we're we're happy. Yay, good, our assets are ready. Um, we can't play the sound. We can't play that asset until we interact. So we've, we're showing a pane saying start the visualizer, or start the game, or whatever it may be. Uh, that's the callback. When we run this, we are, we've got our, our sound, and remember to make the visualizer work with the sound. 
it's the result of the play. That's called a CreateJS sound instance that is expected. That gets passed in, that CreateJS sound instance has a reference to the tag, and that's actually what we're applying the, the sound wave frequency analysis to. It's piggybacking on the web audio uh, frequency. Can't remember if that's what it's called. Fourier frequency or something like that anyway. I, I don't know, it's, it's more complicated, but we've simplified that in our class called Soundwave. As you can see, it's pretty simple, isn't it? We made a tile to prepare uh, the, the little bars to do. And then we add a ticker. Remember, this is all we're ready to go with the Soundwave. Soundwave is actually, the ticker shouldn't be going until the Soundwave is ready. That's right. So there's one more thing in here, probably should seem to work fine though. Soundwave.on ready. Call this arrow function in here. Uh, I don't know. Last time I didn't make an arrow function, did I? We, we called them named functions. But anyway, all that stuff really should go inside of the ready of the sound wave. <laughs> it's starting to look like React or something, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> which has all these nested, 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 nested. You look at any React thing and you're, you're talking like 16 nested things. Blah, 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 blah. But um, we, have to, uh, we have to wait for the assets to load. We have to click on the thing. And really, once we've made the sound, we should probably wait until it's ready. I think that's the, the event. Let's just check on that, though. Yeah, it seems to. It was working fine without it. Surprise, surprise. But I think we're supposed to wait for it to be ready. That's what it showed us in the docs, didn't it? We go into the docs here. Uh, Soundwave.on ready. Yeah, yeah. So maybe that's more for the microphone. The mic might need it because we have to wait until they've accepted the mic and then it's ready. So yeah, that could be the case here. Maybe when you run it with the sound like this, you don't need the the ready. <laughs> what should we do? Should we take it out? Uh, whatever. I'll just leave it there. I would like to, though, adjust it so that it's not in the center, but rather the center comma bottom. Let's just do a test on that again. I think this is probably the more conventional one where they all go one, one way. Although we might want to move it down a bit so it's more centered because right now this is what's centered. If we move it down, uh, center dot M O V is how we can center and then apply relative movement. And if you think about it, it's going to be half the magnification, I guess, roughly, right? So zero comma magnification divided by two. So move it zero in the X and then in the Y move it relative that much. And we end up with this. <laughs> uh, uh, probably some error it looks like magnification is not did you did you know that did you say no no not magnification magnify there you go magnify okay and back at it here uh, I guess that's I guess that's okay but um, I don't know it's a little bit low on the page. <laughs> <laughs> All right, move it down 100. <laughs> We're eyeballing it. The, the eyeball move. Okay, yeah, that looks, that looks nice. <laughs> okay, uh, cheers. Why don't we leave it at that then? We didn't use this to loop through to, um, to make a bunch of circles, but we could have. Maybe you want to try that. I, I always like uh, animating circles on top of circles and then applying a bleh a blend mode to that and then it, it looks really cool those rings all animate very nicely I've done a number of light shows like that but it will let you try that out um, we we did summarize and got most of the summarizing we made the tile we're now uh, constantly checking getting calculating the sound wave value we've got our normalization true in there we're looping through our rectangles and setting the height only of each of those rectangles as we loop through our tile, the height only to the magnified data at I. <laughs> okay. 
Woohoo! There we go. Uh, I am Dr. Abstract. Uh, can you tell that my mind is a little abstract? Is it abstract? I hope it is. It's funny. I don't know if I ever told you the story. I probably didn't. I did one of those uh, IQ test things. And because, um, <laughs> not because I think I'm smart. <laughs> I do think I'm smart. But uh, it was an IQ test that broke things down into different types of intelligences. And so I was just interested in seeing it sort of like that. I don't know if that's Myers-Briggs. No, I don't think that's... Anyway, uh, it broke it down into um, four sections, I think. Or five sections? Five sections uh, with something like ten questions in each or, or whatever. And I got perfect in all of the sections except for one section. In that one section, I got something like two out of eight. <laughs> I think it was eight, eight in each section, 40 and all. Anyway, uh, I got two out of eight in one section, perfect in all the rest of the sections. <laughs> the section that I got two out of eight in was called abstract thinking. <laughs> oh, oh no. I'm a teacher, and sometimes as a teacher, it's funny, sometimes you see the people who really, really want to learn something that they are not good at yet, and uh, it's it's a tricky thing. They're just sort of minds aren't quite built for it, <laughs> maybe. Uh, we, we try, but it's, a, it's an uphill battle, and yet um, quite often you'll find people like that, you know, that want to really specialize in a field that they're they're not quite good at and I'm wondering if that's happened to me I'm Dr. Abstract and I'm not really good at abstract thinking <laughs> I've called myself that but I'm not actually uh, good at it and that's why I'm specializing in it to sort of make up for what I'm missing I don't know interesting huh uh, either that I was just too abstract for the test <laughs> the quiz all right why don't we leave it at that then uh, um, I know you've got things to do probably huh um, I am Dr. Abstract. We're here at Zim Tutorials for Adobe Animate, and you're welcome to join us at zimjs.com slash slack or zimjs.com slash discord. We'd love to see you there. It's also nice. I, I seem that I'm getting over my cold a little bit. I feel like I can at least laugh without losing my voice. <laughs> so that's nice. Cheers. Have a great day or night. Bye.